I, I thought I don't need to explain subgrade, but looks like I need to explain a little bit. Uh, okay, so one of the things, can, can, can you see the screen or is it? Can see, can see, can, stop flickering, stop, stop flickering, okay, can. So what happens is um, subgrade is one of the things that I want support for when CSS grid landed, but unfortunately it didn't, uh, we didn't get the support. So what subgrid is, for example, just look at this image, it, it makes things very, very clear. Usually when we create a, a, a design, right, we take like 10, 12 columns and smack it right at the, the design. And then we try to fill elements into each of these smaller grids. Like for example, this thing called AG2 takes up the middle six columns, the AG1 takes up two columns, for example. What subgrid does is it allows you to contain grids within a grid, so like nested grids. So, so AG4 and AG5 are within AG2, right? But in the current version of CSS grid, you have to define a new grid for AG2 in order to use your current grid. So in AG2, what you need to do is grid template column, six columns, and then grid column get, whatever that was before. So you have to write a lot of template code just to create that um, nested grid functionality. So what I thought was, hey, since you can write that template code over and over and over again, why not create a SAS mixin to automate the hell out of it? So you don't have to do it, right? Um, here is the mixin that I came up with. Uh, okay, let me do this. Uh, this is the mixin that I came up with. Can see? Can see? Can I? Uh, I'm not going to explain the mixin much, but let's figure out how to use it. So when I started playing with layouts, right, one of the exercises that I liked doing is to try building this 10 column complex nested AG grid test thingy. So this is what I started out with. Um, if, if you can build something like this very quickly with your CSS grid, you probably don't have to worry about layouts anymore, so you can ditch bootstrap and forget the hell of it. Okay, so we are going to build this thing together right now and see how the, the, the subgrid thing works. So I actually have some code over here. I'm going to comment it out. In case I forget, you know, like not going to delete it away. So what happens, what happens, what happens? Uh, okay, let me comment this out as well. Okay, so this is what happens when you have CSS grid, uh, when, you, when you lay out a component, right? All the things stack in one column. For the grid to work, so let's go back to this thing. For, for this grid to work, you want to put your HTML elements in such a way where it sort of makes sense for the grid. So if you segment this out, AG1 will be one thing on its own. AG2 and everything in there will be a separate div. AG3 will be a separate div. So this is how the HTML looks like. Okay, AG1, then AG2 is like one whole big chunk of thing, then AG3. Okay, so this is how it works. So what we want to do is to first style AG1, 2, and 3, right? Um, but before that, you need to style the container to create a grid. So container, display, grid, which is basically the thing you need to do, grid template columns. Since we have 10 rows of equal stuff, we can do a repeat, 10, um, 1FR. So we're just going to do that. And once you do that, um, you, can, you can go under, what's that thing? Uh, okay. You can go and find your container. There's just going to be this grid thing which tells you very, very nicely that uh, you're using grid. Then if you click on the waffle here, you will see your grid. So you can count, there's going to be 10 columns. Right, then to create some gaps in between, right, you can use this thing called grid gap. Um, Shirlin was talking about it, and then I think there's a video for this. Can you link it? Can you link the video somehow later? So uh, ask for to link the video, okay. So, Basically, you can do like a grid gap and then you can create gaps between your stuff. 
So that's how you create a grid. Now, next, you want to, we want to position AG1, 2, and 3, right? So AG1 is two columns. We can say grid, column, span 2. That means two columns. So grid 1 becomes two columns, and everything stacks forward. AG2 is, OK, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, six columns. So span 6. And then we got six columns there. So AG3 is also two columns, so I'm just going to do this. Oh, three. Yep. OK, so we have that initial thing right at the start. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting, because if you want to do AG4 and 5, we kind of need to set um, AG2 in a way. We kind of need to redefine the grid for AG2. So what you have to do is display grid, grid template columns, repeat 6, comma, 1FR, grid, gap, 1EM. See, see how I'm repeating this thing? Sort of like repeating this thing over here. So this is what we have to do to set the AG2 to, that, um, to this uh, grid container. Once we do this, we can do like AG4, which is going to be three columns. Grid, column, span three. Then here, three columns, right? AG5 is going to also going to be three columns, so span three together, bam. So this is what you need to do to have that fake nested grid. Lah. But what I did with this is you can remove all of this and say include, in, in include Fox subgrid at 6. Bam, it's the same thing. So whatever that I just did, it basically does the same with this mix-in. So one line instead of four lines. That's basically what the, the mix-in does. All right. Moving on, moving on. Uh, so what we want to do is, OK, AG6 is two columns. OK, and then AG7 is four columns. All right, and then we want to say, OK, AG7 now is four columns, but there are some stuff in between, in, inside that we want to do uh, a grid for, a nested grid for. So we use include subgrid again and say four. So basically, it kind of feels the same, except you see the inner things became grid items already. Grid items automatically take out one column, so you see AG 8, 9, and 10 as one columns. Then AG, AG 8 and AG 9 are two columns, right? So grid, I think you must be so bored with me over here. Span 2. <laughs> And one final trick for spanning the, f the entire thing is to set um, AG10, grid, column, start 1, slash, n minus 1. So that's like span the full column. Uh, it's not doing. Oh, OK, OK, OK. Colon, colon. OK, bam. So this is how you can use um, this thing. Now, what, what, what if you don't have this AG6 over here? And you kind of need to move AG7 a little bit to the right. What happens, right? So you can say um, grid column, I think it was start. I cannot remember, but I think it's start. You can say two. So it shifts. This will be start, start at the second column, which is what it's doing now. You can say three, and then it poops a little bit to the right. Uh, no, it doesn't. Column, column. Yes. OK, so that's, that's the full subgrid mixing that I created to help you with nested subgrid, nested grids. That's it. Do you need to use it open source? OK, OK, it, this is open source um, link, link, link. OK, easy, easy, easy. Um, Google Zell <laughs> for uh, subgrid, yeah. of course. And then so there you get, you get the, the the entire freaking blog post explaining what I just said. OK, then. Can you all the links, these sites, 
Zell stuff we will link in the meetup page and like Facebook and other social media things. Okay, fine, Twitter. <laughs> um, okay, so the last person is uh, another person that got strong arm by me. Question, okay, question. Okay, question for Zell first. Okay, this one is one question. Yeah. Uh, oh, I love question numbers. Say you know, green chocolate can throw at me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's display block, which is why everything got stacked like that. But once I do display grid, it stacks like that. Question: How easy is it to override the faux subgrid if you should need to? Say at a certain break point, your grid changes and you don't no longer need it to be in a faux subgrid. Um. Well, put it in a break point. You know, like if you use CSS, media, whatever. Uh, this is SAS syntax. I, okay, if you use CSS, okay. <laughs> if you use CSS, media, min, width, and let's say 600 pixels. You can do this thing over here. Uh, no. Yeah, my question if though is if, because I, I use um, mobile first, uh -huh. so smaller widths and then expand and override. If I've already got the faux subgrids applied, how do I get rid of it? Well, you, if you do that, maybe one of the ways is to restrict your, make your media queries such that it becomes like, if it's... So there's no easy way to overwrite it. There is. You, <laughs> if, you, if you don't need it, you can just say display block. Otherwise, just okay. override your grid element. And that's okay. it. Right. No, uh, uh, Rachel and Ru wrote the, uh, this overriding. I've, I've just posted it in my links. Yeah. yeah, you just toss in the link. I, I cannot. I, I, don't, I don't have that use case. Yes, no, I don't have that use case. Now you have use case. So now. When I get to it, I'll think about <laughs> it. I don't have a good answer. If you don't think of any questions, can go and bombard them one. They're great. They are like, you know, semi fun employed people. So, yeah, go ahead. Bombard I am totally them with fun questions. employed people, please. <laughs> uh, anyway, the last speaker of the night is uh, 